happy, happy Advent calendar eight. <laughs> well, happy Christmas. We didn't actually, we haven't actually opened it. So we're going to, we're going to now, can I do it? Uh, there. So what have we got in, in door number eight or in box number eight? We have, these are so useful, so useful. We have a whole bag of um, ear findings, which is brilliant. So we're going to make earrings today. These are fantastic. Uh, pop those back in there. Now we've got at least two pairs. We're going to make two pairs. If we can, we'll make three. So we're going to start off. I'm going to fetch these, pop you back over there. So we're going to start off with these two pairs of earrings. And then if we have any spare time, we've got a third pair we'll do. But I don't want to rush it, but I also don't want to, you know, I, I like to, you know me, I like to give loads. OK, so we're going to start off with the netted ones. These are netted. These are brick stitch, which you don't very often see. Um, it, it's used quite a lot for other things, but it's, it's less used for things like necklaces and things like that. Everyone tends to use peyote, but some people prefer it. Anyway, so we're going to start with the netted one. Then we'll, mo we, we'll move on to the brick stitch. And then if we have time, sneaky little third one, we're going to do some um, twisted herringbone. OK. The, well, you can take it over and put a wire in if you wanted, uh, Adam, and make them into candy canes. And as it happens, I've got, I haven't got the exact colours because um, I did these a while ago and then I was packing my bag thinking, where did I put those seed beads? So they'll be somewhere safe at home in a bag ready to fetch with me, but I don't know where the bag is. So for the candy canes, if we do candy canes, we go in those colours. So a uh, bit different. Right, let's get cracking. So we're going to start off with the netted earrings. I'm going to leave those behind because they might not happen. Netting, the netting's used not so often for earrings. I love it for an earring because you can create these diamond shapes. They sit and they're lovely. The, I, I did have a lady who asked um, about it because I did a netted bracelet on a show. It's exactly the same technique. So to do this technique, you, you'd also be able to do a bracelet. Obviously, there's less depth there and they're bigger beads, but it, the, the principle is exactly the same. So I'll talk you through that as we're going through. So you'd be able to do a bracelet if you want as well. But for now, we're going to do these. So what do you need? You're going to need some beading thread, fire line, wildfire, um, whichever. I've got a six uh, pound fire line here that the six pound so traditionally when seed beading took off many many moons ago um they used to use fishing line so the six pound the poundage that you you are you you quite often see on um seed beading threads is to do with actually how big a fish you could hold on that line before the line broke so that's that's what the poundage is is how much how much poundage it is before it breaks it most people aren't going to make necklaces that are bigger than that because we also do, um, you can get 10, 12, you can get four. Um, you're not going to make a 12 pound necklace. However, bigger beads, you want a thicker thread, etc., etc. et cetera. Um, for, this, for the netted earrings, we've got 11 O's and we've got 15s. Now, the reason I use two different colors um, for netting and two different sizes it can just be two different colors it can do different sizes you can do bigger and smaller basically when you're let me take this earring out so when you're creating the netting if you've got to count each one so if you put all these beads on and then you're going to say oh two go in the third two go in the third it's a pain if you've got a different color you count once and then you're just automatically going in the other color and it's great so you don't have to worry about it at all um so what we're going to do is use two contrasting colors but i've also got the size so if you haven't got any 15s don't worry or if you want to use an eight there you could use a bigger size i wouldn't use a six um you could use six and eight you could use eight and 15 you know think about your combinations um so this this bracelet is 8 and 15 and you get a much bigger net than you do with that one so but this you wouldn't necessarily want in your ear okay so 
we're going to start off and we're starting off in the center and then each time we're kind of losing one so we're going to go down here and then we're going to come back up and then we're going to go down and up and down and up and then we'll come back to the other side and do the same there are different ways of doing netting you can do it horizontal that's fine you can do it you can do it any way you like this is this is um it's called horizontal because normally that would go horizontally across your wrist to make a bracelet um so it's called horizontal netting we we're kind of doing it vertically um but you're working you're working along that plane so for this bit here we're going to start with this this one here and we want nine of these um nine of the 15s so i've i've put a stopper bead on so i've got an uh, any other any color stopper bead so you thread your bead on then thread through it again and that just stops the beads falling off then i'm going to start 115 two 11s 115 two 11s 115 two 11s until you've got nine of your there's a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, whoop, come on, seven, eight. Okay, it's amazing how how you know you think oh that's going to be long, but it but it's uh, one two three four five six seven eight nine. So this is the bit we want to stop at. So one two three four five six seven eight. So one more set of two and one. Okay, so now we've got our first set. We want to do this little bit round here. And then we're going to come back up so we actually want that side that side and that side so now we've as you can see this is kind of made up of triangles of diamond shapes so we now want to start making the diamonds so we're going to go we want two two um 11s and a 15 two 11s and a 15 two 11s and then we're coming back to this 15 here so we've got one which is this one two three four so you always want four corners so we're going to have two one two so that's one two three and then we're going to come back to this one so we want our fourth one and our two on there and then we're going to miss that one and go in through this second one don't drop your beads off the end Alison one two slide those down if you slide them down they won't drop off and then we're going to go through that one there we go and pull down so i'm just putting my fingers over them to hold them into place so now we've got our first little loop it doesn't look much like a diamond at the moment but it will start shaping so now we want to to make these diamonds stop pulling there we go we're basically going every other so we just want two 15 two 11s a 15 two 11s all the way to the top so two uh 11s one 15 two 11s is what i should say and then we're going in through that 15 there and you see where you're not having to count where that bead is going to be you automatically know because it's either a different color or a different size um, whatever so we're going to have two one two come on two one two right so we've now come back to we're coming this way actually so we've now got that one there so we're actually here 
so we can go around i'm going to turn that over there we go just so my shepherd hook doesn't get in the way so we're now here so we want to go around here and finish this bit so i'm just going to nip around there and then i can start zigzagging so i'm going to go two one there is no right or wrong to the order you do this you find you every seed beater will do it slightly different and you might learn one way and then take a shortcut one day and think oh that's all right but each time you want to have your four um, corners so one two three four so i need another bead because i've got one there and i'm just going to pick that up and go back down through there okay so now we've got that little diamond at the top of there we're now going to come down this way and fill in this next row there we go so one two one one two so once you only at the ends do you necessarily need any more so we're going to pick up this one here and that's our fourth corner feed through there pull down and you see it's starting to pull into shape a bit more now it's never going to because it's um, an earring it's never going to pull completely um out like you would on a bracelet which which has um the weight of the clasp and things so but it will as you can see there it does hold a shape so one two one one two there one two one one two so now we're going to go through this one we don't actually want let me put that down so we want to decrease so we can't do a loop-de-loop -loop up here now there are ways of doing it you can either go um along there and do down that side and then keep swapping over you can just go through this next one come round outside it and come back through down to here so you're kind of turning the corner you could turn it on here but well i've got black thread so i can you might see it i doubt you're going to see it on the real on on yours but it's only because i've got clear so if i skip and go straight down there down that side so i'm skipping let me put that down and then you can see i've come out of this one here out of this 15 here i'm then ignoring it and just going back to the one below and through to that next 15. pull that tight we're now on to this next row so let's do the next row this is the easy bit um these are great you can you can use these shapes you can make um you could make a, a necklace from it if you wanted and do them end to end and have a load of diamonds it's all making it a little bit different taking a, a what's a fairly standard um stitch a knitting stitch um a netting not knitting don't knit with your seed beads well you can if you want um and just giving it a slightly different uh, a slightly different flavor don't think you know once you know the technique don't think it's always got to be that way when i first started um my mum taught me how to seed bead but it was all very um a certain style so again we're going to skip that one go down through to that next uh 15 and just pull you're getting a tiny little thread bridge across here if anyone's that close to you that they can see that even this black on top of the um clear crystal good luck to them um so we're going to go another two here put one in another two here and we're picking up that next one like i said it, it's so much easier and you can do these with with different size and um, the bracelet i've got has got three um going up and down but you're doing this little bit at the top of each of, of um one two one one two so let's just go to that one 
we're nearly at the end of our diamond shape now so we're going to feel and you can see the natural decrease that's happening um i like turning things because i like um working in a certain way but to feed that through it's easier for me to do it away from me than towards me which is silly because normally i'd be this way so the last one we're going to have two one whoops come here two and then we're going to go through here now this is the last of the diamond as you can see you're at this point here so we want to come up to here and do the other side so we're going to feed all the way back up through now on our way past there are different ways you can attach your shepherd hook to uh, oh that's my start end okay so I would just if you want to you can put a loop you can attach a jump ring there but I would just put my shepherd hook in there in that one like I've done there and and that's it jobs are good and it's it's not going to go anywhere so take my thread end out of the way we're now going to go down to the, to the next corner to start our decrease on this side and if I do that you can see now that it starts to take shape so once you've done it just tweak it so that it pulls into into shape but wait till you've done it i would keep your tension you don't want it too loose you want it to to um hold up so you don't want it mega tight but i wouldn't have it too i wouldn't have it sort of really really slack because you'll see gaps in it you'll see thread coming through so when i pull through I just took it round that finger trap it underneath there and it just holds that thread in place while I pick up the next one and then I can bead through so you can see these are a quite quite um, a quick project for you to do um, to make a pair of earrings completely um, both sides is going to take you less than an hour um, quite you know it, it it, it will have taken me perhaps 20 minutes to do one and that's and that's um stopping and explaining um a bit more than you would normally so you could certainly certainly do them easily within an hour which is which is great it's a nice little evening project again we're going to skip that one and go through to the next diamond point pull that down and then we're going to go back down this way so beautiful beautiful things to wear you can do them multicolors you can have patterns um you can keep them the same it really really doesn't matter here we go i'm going to pull that one through one two three one two pull that one through so each time you're doing it it goes less and less if you did this with eight toes you'd get quite a big statement now whether they would stand whether they would be whoops sorry stiff enough um to hold their shape in your ear i'm not sure i think the corners would curl in but if you think about the swarovski used to do um a sheet um of crystal and and it would drape and it was lovely then if you did them all out of um, a clear quartz that would look amazing so we're going to skip that one go through to the next one so once you've got confident with doing it using the two colors either do um clear quartz and maybe um one that's slightly different nearly did it wrong there two one two um, and that will give you that will give you a um quite a different look and feel to it um or maybe try an all gold one with silver it's 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 up to you you you'll soon find out if you're comfortable skip over that one and go through um doing it one but i i'm i'm lazy i don't like counting if i can find a way round with a with a marker because effectively they're marker beads for you and if i can find a way around doing it then i will do so this time 
I'm going to go straight back up through all the beads. Now, what I would suggest is you go all the way around the outside. Now we've finished. I would go all the way the, around the outside with your thread. Come on. What you might find is because we're using 15s and you pass through a few times, you might need a 12, size 12 needle rather than a, a size 10. And don't pull it because if you pull as you're going around, you will curl it up like that. But if you don't pull it, then there you've got your earring. We're now going to go over to that bead. Now you can work round and round or you can come out to where your start is. Do two overhand knots. There's no tension in this. Again, being careful not to pull that out of shape. There's no tension in this, so there's no stress on um, security if you like and um, then I'm going to go through that bead and down that side Come on. and trim off that side and then I'm going to do something you should never do on live TV which is thread a needle so I'm going to take my end because I always like to fasten it in I never like to cut a, a to cut an end right by the knot because the shorter the the end of the knot for want of a better word I'm just going to take that through there the shorter that distance is the more likely it is to undo if you if you leave it with a bit of a tail um, that won't undo so we're then going to get a pliers out whoops there you go my scissors Chain nose, flat nose, doesn't matter. We just want to open the shepherd hook. Don't forget, don't unravel it. Do the door bit. There we go. And we're going to pop that on there. Shut that. And there you've got your earring. So that's our first project. We've got our earrings there. That's the one we've just made. So um, make your other one in exactly the same way. Um, and there's your new pair of earrings coming up. So that's number one. OK, let's go for number two. So I'm going to pop that one in front. Like I say, these are great um, and they don't take that long. So brick stitch. Brick stitch and peyote are cousins. Um, <laughs> they do get on Adam um, so if you go if you go top to bottom let me go that way top to bottom if you're working from there going up it's brick stitch if you work that way if you look at it it looks like peyote they are two sides or 90 degree turn um, to get you the same thing for want of a better word so let me just get my other seed beads in. Let me just pop these away. This bit is great because I just scoop scoop all my seed beads up. I do have a scoop, but uh, just put those away. Uh, there we go. Okay, so for this one, we've got one, two, three, four, five colours. So I've gone Christmassy again. We've got the green in the middle. We don't need that many of those. So we're going to put those there. They can go, go on needle out your way. They can go at the top. Let me. Okay, so we've got a green there. Um, then we're going to want the darker pink. which is a lovely, it doesn't matter what colours you use, pick colours that um, work for you. You can do these all one colour if you want. Um, then we've got the lighter pink. I just like an ombre. Um, then we're going to go white. That one's a bit of an ivory, but we're going to go white on this one. 
okay and then we've got a gold that's an older gold but i've got a gold gold so they're a bit far apart but there's there's my color palette um which is quite close to that but like i say i'm, I'm it's not exact so i'm going to leave that one to there so these we're starting here so we're starting part way through we do this triangle the netting as you notice naturally naturally decreased um lovely brick stitch very very much decreases naturally but we start off with ladder stitch so we need to create a base that we can then brick stitch from so how we do that we're going to create we're going to do a two a two um drop uh stitch here so we want those four beads on to begin with so we want four golds one two three four of our gold slide it down now some people um go round again me as i said before i can be a bit lazy i'm going to do a knot so pull it in and you want them to be sitting square so we're going to pull that into there there we go so we want two by two so we're going to pull those down there we want to be coming out of there right so we're coming out of the top let me fold it down there we go out of the top of our two we want to put the next two in so that's two whites so i'm going to pop two whites on it, this is this is this is a, a stitch I, I i'd call this a loop-de-loop -loop style stitch because you're going to pick the next two on and come back through here so you're creating a loop so all the way along here is you're creating a loop so you're going to go up through there and you've looped those on then you're going to come back down through those two pull those down and then we're we're there so the next two are the pale pink so we're going to put those two on we've come out of the bottom so we're going to go feed it back through from the top all the time so you kind of do that so one way that way then that way then that way but it's always creating a loop whichever way your thread comes out of so move on to the pink i'm coming up and out of the top so i will go add my two dark red one two and go back up through the bottom come down they don't they don't don't stand out as well as i'd hoped but back down through those red pull that tight to keep it even don't worry if it sort of starts looking a bit zigzaggy because you will pull it into line so we've come out of the red we're now at the center we've got these green in the center and this green is beautifully lush so we're going to come back down through those and pull and then we're going to go up through them so we've done that other loop so we now do the same so we're going to go dark pink and through and back down then we've got pale pink down and back up and then white up and then back down and then we want two lots of the gold so we're going to go down and back up and then up and back down okay so there's our base row if i put that that is basically that row there okay so pretty good match there you go those slide over we're now going to go if you if you look this one automatically goes in so push it that way so brick stitch what is brick stitch it's what it says on the can if you imagine you're building a brick wall so these are these are on top of each other if that was a brick wall it would fall over so what we need to do is place them so that they're in the gap so they go um let me hang on get that piece of paper for 
So if you think we've got our beads coming like this, yeah, along, they're all supposed to be even. So what we need to do is now build there on top. So this is, this is why it's called brick stitch. It starts to look like a brick wall and you can see it's going to have a natural, you can make it go even, but you can see it's got a natural progression, which is why they're so fabulous for this kind of earring. Next row, which would go in that direction, but again, you're going over the gap. So each time you're not going over, it's not bead over bead, it's bead over gap. Okay, so we do that until we get to the top where we're going to have an actual loop, to be fair. So that's why you're building a brick. So we need to get from there. We've just come out of the top of there. If we go straight through two beads, they're going to sit there. We need them to move over. So we actually pick up the bridge, the thread bridge, sort of our thread has done that over each of them, haven't we? We've, we've kind of put a thread going across there through each of our beads. We're going to hook under that and use it. So let me take this. So we next want gold, but I first, can you see the black line there? Can I show you, Adam, can I show that to, yeah. Can you see, can you see it? Yeah, you can just about make out that black line, can't you? Oh, can you? Okay, let's try it that way. Yeah, can you see that black line going across? Cool. Okay, so what we want to do is thread underneath so that our thread is coming between there. So I've actually, this is underneath the thread and I want to pull it up. So pull that tight. That is where we want our beads to sit. So we want the gold. And because we're at the end, like we did for this one, we're gonna to have to do two lots. Now how I've designed this, each time we're going to have gold all the way we're going to have white then less pink then less blue and then we're at, uh, less dark pink and then we're having um just the green at the bottom so we're actually decreasing the colors from inside so you've always got the gold on the outside so you always know you want two rows of the gold so we're going to pick up we've come out through there we're going to pick up four of the gold at the end okay now we want to come up through there and down through there. So we're going to go through the next gap along. Okay, and then that will sit like that. To reinforce it for the first one, I tend to go back round again. So I've gone just now straight across, up through that first one, and then back down through, whoops, sorry. Caught my needle there and then back down through there. Let's pull that. There we go. So now you can see how they're sitting um, side by side. So we're going to go through that thread bridge at the bottom again. And this is how we anchor now going along. So we're coming through the thread bridge. Come here and back up through those two beads. So it means it's just locked it in place. So we come back up through those three beads, uh, two beads. Thank you, there. So we're now ready for the next one, which is the white. So you pick up your two white. And then we're going to go straight under that thread bridge. So your first one, as, as always, is your awkward one. And then under the thread bridge, back up through the white, both of them, Alison, there we go, and up. So we then got the, the pale blue, pick up your next two pale blue. Fetch it down, feed back up through. Okay. And then we've got the red, the, the darker pink. I'm going to pick up those two through that thread bridge there and back up. Now, we haven't got anywhere for the green to go because we need to repeat that for this side. So if you look at this, 
you're ending up with the pink there. I've just realized what I've done with this one. This is single. I've done this one double. Doesn't matter, it's the same pattern. So instead of going up one at a time, like these are, I'm going up two at a time. So we'll get a much taller um, bead. So let me just carry on with that. So we now need to do the two pink. That's force of habit because I was just doing two. It doesn't matter, you can do two drop or one drop. It doesn't matter. All it means is you get a taller, um, you get a taller uh, point, triangle. Go up through the two. So you should have um, the two lots of pink together, the two lots of dark pink. Pick up your next two light, go along, pull through. What I'll do is I'll change the number on the next one. Go back, back up through there. So we've got our pink. We want our white to go through there. Pass up the two white. And then we want our two lots of gold. So two gold feed through. and pull up and do, that's a pink, what are you doing there? Two gold and feed through. Okay, so we're now coming up through the last gold. Okay, you have to catch the thread bridge. If that happens and they fall off, it's because you haven't actually got underneath the thread bridge to lock it off. So we're gonna go back through there and go up. Okay, so we've gone two by two and you can see you're going to get quite a tall, much taller than there if we carry on doing that. So I'm gonna show you, this one was done with single. You can do it still two by two, but I'm now going to drop to one row. So. We've come up through there. We're going to go through our thread bridge to put our thread in the right position. There we go. So this time we want one bead at a time. So we're going up one at a time. So you need two beads, one up, one down. And then you're gonna come down through that second one and they should then sit side by side. Okay, so again, just repeat the first one to Get it in the right frame of mind. When you're doing two, they do actually sit um, slightly easier on the end. Um, so we're now doing one. So we now want our next one is a white underneath that thread bridge. Pull through, back up through the single white. Then we've got a light pink through there, back up. Now we've only got room for our one dark pink is there and back up through. So we're now in the middle. You can see how this is, you, you can, even see the curve suddenly going meow it, it's shallowed off um so now we're back up to the pink because uh, the light pink because we've got no other room we've come to the center so it, it's quite a, an easy progression you can again you can do different patterns on these you can you, if you sit down with some graph paper um if you go online and type in brick stitch graph paper um, there's loads of download, uh, downloadable uh, graph paper um, and you can use that to design your own earrings and then follow it row by row. So if you want to create your own pattern, you want to do um, something elaborate on it, absolutely you can. Um, let me just get to the end of this and I will tell you how many you need. need. So. We've now come, so this is quite steep. This will now sort of almost round off. This is great if you want to do a Santa 
and you do red do the first part in white that creates his his uh, band for his um, hat and then do all that in red do a little pink nose there and then do all of these in white for his beard and put a little pom-pom then you've got a Santa so it, you can have great fun with these great fun um, anyway so we're just going to go through that thread bridge and then I will get my little piece of paper and while I'm doing this <laughs> they're being cheeky in there it's just as well you can't hear so we're starting off with 11 of your double height that's to give that width if you want to make it a bit wider and do a bigger diamond you can um but i've started off with 11 across just so and then if you get your brick stitch graph paper bear in mind that you that one's a double height so you'd only go one row of that but no you're going to do two and then you in this bit here you can put whatever design you like um so now we're going to do uh two of our gold again and you can see it, it's a natural it's a natural decliner um to speed this up i'm going to skip the round again there because it's sitting quite nicely and just now carry on with my white because you can go through um the sides and if you what what will happen is that that kind of kinks up a little bit um but it's it's not it's not a an, an issue really um then i want my pale pink now i've run out of space for my dark pink so i'm going to pop that through there pick up the next one pop that through there so this time we've got no red or dark pink we're going to pick up the white so it will it will suddenly come to an end shall we say quite quickly because each time you've got less on your row to do so you're going to go through there pick up the next one and come round then we're going to turn the corner again so don't forget to move on your uh, bridge pick up the next one excuse me <coughs> pick up your next one there we go then we're on white so we're nearly we're nearly there and this is so this is real time creating these earrings again you're going to be able to do this project probably with um an hour should be able to make a pair of earrings an hour and a half at the tops of these because to be fair you've got quite a lot of tassels we've got to do the tassels yet um you've got quite a lot of tasselage and that can be quite quite time consuming it's not going to be hours but time consuming because you do have to count if you want them um patterned or well you have to count if you want them graduated you can do them flat if you want um another way to do them um which i've done in the past is um you can actually do the triangle at the top but come here there we go pull so you can do the bit at the top and then have these instead of coming to a point like that have them so that that one stays longest and these track down and then do it in reverse so you've got each side has a long side and then goes up on an angle and then this one has the long side and goes up on an angle like that they look fantastic um they're great for for elongated earrings um anyone who can wear shoulder dusters they're perfect for doing things like that so we're going to pick up the two gold again all the time we've got these two gold constantly at the ends like i say and it, each time you're pulling them in you can do these fantastic colors and i'm looking forward to seeing what colors you all pick to do um, obviously the shepherd hooks so the shepherd hooks are um you can't make the earrings without them but but there's not a lot of technique 
um, to using them, shall we say. So we're down to just the two gold here. Um, but you do have to, you do have to um, think about what you're doing with your seed beading. The shepherd hooks you can use with anything, with a charm, with wire, um, whatever medium you use. You, you, if you want earrings, you're going to use some sort of earring finding. Shepherd hooks is probably the most common these days. Um, so can you see how that's sort of quite sharp and then shallowed in? You're almost getting it rounded. So when you're doing your Santa's hat, I would be tempted, or an elf. So if you did it in green and white stripes, you could have an elf. Um, I would be tempted to do two by two by two each, each row rather than um, doing the single because it would give you a very tall pointy hat. Or if you wanted to do a wizard, there's nothing to stop you doing a wizard. Um, like that then we got one of the white we're nearly done with the color and then we'll do the little top bit for adding on our shepherd hook one of those and then we go through there but have fun with these you know you can do different shapes um, you can you you know once you learn brick stitch um, you can do all you can have all sorts of fun with shapes and things. Where have you gone? There we go. Make sure you go through your through your thread, but not round the other bead. So that needs to come up through there. There we go. Pull that through. So we're now getting quite near the top. If you wanted to, you could stop there and put them together and, and have some sort of dicky bow. You know, you can use this for all sorts. So don't think you've just got to do, you've got to do it to the end. If you do it this way and create a diamond, that also looks good. Um, so again, we want the two golds, only a few more rows. Uh, there we go. Through there back up and then we'll look at getting back down to the bottom uh, that's our two gold we have no white so we just want two more gold so one two so we've got the four at the top we'll go down to three come on through there so two of our gold So on this row, we'll only have three beads. So we go up through the middle and add our next. There we go. So now we're, we're, we're coming to the point. So what I've done on these is where I've just got the two beads. So when I turn around, I'll just have the two beads you could just go straight away and add three beads up each side and create um, your little loop for your earring finding. So we'll do three gold and then three gold and come, I'm still going to go under that bridge, put those together and then we'll go back round again through all six beads depending on whether you want to sort of make sure it's a definite three and three come back down there but you've now got your little loop that you can put your earring finding in we want to do the tassel so I'm going to add the earring finding before we go back down whoops give me a there we go. So now we want to go and add the tassel. So we need to go back down to where we've got the ladder weave. You can either start in the middle and do the longest first, which I usually tend to do, which means you're gonna to have to work your thread. Either finish this one off, go round and round again, um, and finish that one off, which you could do, and then come down here and rejoin, which I think we'll do. Let's go back up through there. Don't forget to go through your shepherd hook as well. 
and back down so what you're doing is basically reinforcing the bridge the other way you could have done it is to add um, some French wire through there and that would also work and give you a little loop at the top you you want more than one thread because you've got metal on it um, like I say it's not going to be um, what's the name bearing weight bearing or anything so you don't need you don't have to worry too much because you're not going to pull it so once you've got to there we can snip that off you could if you wanted run it down to the sides um, if you wanted but I'm going to head straight back down to here and then I'm going to go a couple of times around the two red sets so I'm going to take that up I don't want to leave a knot on the outside because the earrings you'll see both sides there's no back and front because obviously people can see you from the back so I'm just going to go around those a few times there we go and then finish by coming back through that green now if you watch this thread won't move I can pull that that isn't going anywhere I know it's secure I can trim that off so I've got a little got a little uh, aid memoir this has got 30 of the green three of the dark pink three of the light pink three of the white then we go to 24 of the pink three pale pink three white then we go to uh, is that right I've missed one 20 I think of the white with no pink and then we got those two so you can do this to whatever length you want that's what I've done to graduate it so on the first one I've got uh, red white uh, green pink pale pink and white and then because I've got rid of the green I've got the pink up there then the pale pink and white get rid of that pink then I've got the pale pink and the white then just the white and then finish with those okay so you can you can add however many you like to to it and it's fine so what we need to do is we need to feed on 30 of the green so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen you can understand why this um is a bit time consuming 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 i'm going to stop at 20 um only because i'm conscious of the time so this will be a shorter tassel then i want three so we're going to graduate again three of the dark three of the pale pink three of the white and then we're going to do um, a little pico edge with the gold so we want we've got a slightly elongated one so i'm going to put one two three four five of the gold beads and then go back up through the white so i'm going to slide those down come down here and then you're going to go all the way back up through those beads uh, come on and back up through those and then when you get to the top you're going to go through the two um, the two ladder stitch now to pull this through hold on to the middle one if I can find it hold on to that middle one and then you're going to pull the thread through and then you just make sure it's sitting in the right place you don't want to pull that tight um, you want to leave it but you don't want it to sort of be gappy so you pull that through then we're going to go down to the next one and you carry on doing your next set if you find when you're doing the next one that pulls all you've got to do is to slip back through one of those just to lock the thread into place so you can do a little loop-de-loop -loop there to lock it into thread then you move your next one then your next one then your next one until you've finished and graduate them 
to however many you want to graduate. You could just leave um, that colour off, that will take it up three and give you a um, less of a deep um, one as those. And that's how you make your brick stitch with, with tassel, with um, fringe, sorry, earrings. So have fun. Do, do get some graph paper, have fun with the colours, have fun with different patterns. You can do it in different sizes, which is absolutely fine. Um, for earrings, you might want to leave it at that size. But like I said, you can do, um, let me get him out of the way, you can actually sort of create a diamond shape. Um, but have fun with it, play with your brick stitch, have a great time with the rest of the calendar, and enjoy your Christmas. Never miss a show by watching on the go with the Jewelry Maker app. Head over to your app store now and search Jewelry Maker and simply download to your smartphone or tablet. You can watch the shows live and see your favourite presenters and guests. Click on the Today button to shop all of the products that are featured on today's show. Want to know what's hot? Then click here to see today's bestsellers and highlights. Have you missed a show or want to watch one back? Then click on the schedule button and you can go back seven days to watch and shop and you can also see what's coming up over the next seven days. Want to say hello or ask a question to our guests? Then send a message to the studio. You can also keep in touch with all the latest news, events, product launches and much more by clicking for our social media pages.